Oh, Half-Life. Originally released in 1998, this game is pretty well known. Like, this entire franchise is popular. Like, you at least heard of Half-Life, right? It's gotten feature-length videos, analysis videos, and of course, countless Let's Plays. If you Google best PC games of all time or best 90s games, Half-Life is bound to show up. I mean, come on, if you're using Steam, you should know that Half-Life is a thing. <laughs> If you haven't played Half-Life or somehow know nothing about it, go play it. But if you're sticking around, I'll give you a quick summary. Gordon Freeman is a 27-year-old scientist who graduated from MIT with a PhD in theoretical physics. Which is weird, but also kind of amazing. He's a scientist, an employee of Black Mesa Facility. Not a soldier or spy or anything like that, just some nerd. So Black Mesa is a research facility located in the New Mexico desert. Freeman's about to partake in an experiment, and, and by experiment I mean he pushes something into a beam and then everything goes haywire. Uh, this disaster is called the Resonance Cascade. Now Freeman has to escape the facility. There's all kinds of monsters that teleport into our world, including the famous head crabs that can possess human bodies. Eventually the military shows up who try to clean the mess just by killing everyone. And there's loads more to the lore, but that's, you know, that's the basics. If you really honestly haven't played Half-Life or watched someone play it, I recommend it. Even if you've played the second game or Alex, I truly recommend you at least try the first game. Majority of the gaming community love it, so I'm sure you will enjoy it as well. And again, it has a lot of lore, and if you're a fan of that kind of thing, Half-Life has a slew of fan theories, as well as stories and mysteries and all these mods and stuff that try to talk about what was happening while it was going on. There's always Hunt Down the Freeman. <laughs> eh, don't play that. that. That was a joke. So let's talk about the good stuff. Half-Life is fairly gory and can be spooky. Epilepsy warning for a few minutes. One of the coolest and creepiest scenes is a head crab zombie flipping out at a monitor outputting white noise. He's reacting to the CD-ROM Fossil YouTube channel. Epilepsy warning over. The OST is unique in that it's more ambient. Like, the tram ride that everyone loves so much is quite fantastic in that you just have a droning ambient sound while the uh, announcer's talking over the intercom or whatever. It, it's creepy. It adds to the creepy atmosphere. I mean, here, just take a listen. Good morning, and welcome to the Black Mesa Transit System. This automated train is provided for the security and convenience of the Black Mesa Research Facility personnel. The time is 8.47 a.m. Current topside temperature is 93 degrees, with an estimated high of 105. The Black Mesa compound is maintained at a pleasant 68 degrees at all times. Everything about Half-Life is graphically and tonally timeless. Of course, I'm playing the Steam version with HD textures. Some people prefer the original textures, but eh, it's all personal preference. I could play the original version, however, I don't have a time-appropriate machine that can actually play this. I have a video on the channel where I uploaded part of a live stream. It showcased how my low-spec Windows 98 machine handles Half-Life. It is quite nice that Half-Life has received updates through the years. It looks amazing and runs just about on anything. And right now, it's on sale during the Steam Winter Sale for $1.99. There's no excuse not to pick this up. It helps, too, that when this game first came out, it had what is now considered standard controls. There's no struggling with outdated control schemes or mechanics. Perhaps the only thing in this game that isn't found in newer titles is long jumping, which is required to learn for some jumps. It's taught to you in the training level. Even that training level has a cool atmosphere. I'd say it's worth checking out if you haven't already. All this adds up to a game that is truly timeless. It's enjoyable and can be beaten when sitting if you know what you're doing. G-Man's an awesome character that is still mysterious to this day, even after Alex. His monologue at the end of the game is fantastic. I won't spoil it, but you know, try to experience it for yourself. The previously mentioned head crabs are a fan favorite and for good reason. It's a tough enemy to face due to its size. When they become zombies, they become super terrifying with gaping chest mouths. But when it's walking around, it's also kind of cute. Look, he's coming for a hug! I always thought head crabs were cute despite their intentions. <laughs> One of my favorite enemies in all of Half-Life is only in the first game, really, and that's the Hound Eyes. Love this enemy. 
They're also cute when they aren't breaking the sound barrier. I don't know what's with me and thinking horrendous monsters are cute, but I'd like a docile head crab and a hound eye as a pet. <laughs> There's a series of Flash games I played all the time as a kid called Combat Instinct, and they use a variety of Half-Life sounds, including the Hound Eye attack. Well, the Half-Life sounds are used everywhere. It's, it's, it's just kind of a classic list of sounds. Half-Life Cat is a classic. <gasps> Hello? No! Of course, this game is well known for its interactivity in the opening level. You can overcook some dude's lunch, set off an alarm and make everyone mad. Throughout the game, you can activate vending machines to get cola for 1 HP. This isn't new, as Duke Nukem 3D is remembered for its various interactions, such as light switches, but it's still neat to see, and even games today don't necessarily do this. And that brings up why I don't think this game is the best thing ever. One, I think this game was slightly overhyped, just because everything that it does, there was some other game that was also being revolutionary, but no one ever talks about. And it helps that this game's actually good, and, and even though it's a proof of what the Source Engine and Valve can do, there's still a game around it that's fun to play. But I also just get annoyed how everyone talks about how awesome the interactivity in these levels are, considering that it's not really a first-time thing, and it seems like people act like Valve were the first ones to do it. But let's not talk about how I think this game's overhyped. So I'm going to talk about things that genuinely kind of just rub me the wrong way. And the first issue is platforming. I can't stand first-person platforming. Half-Life doesn't overdo it, thankfully, so it's not a huge problem. But it's one of the reasons why I can't stand Doom Eternal. But that's nothing compared to the overall level design. Most of the time when I boot up Half-Life, my immediate reaction to almost every level is... Oh, God. It's possible to get softlocked as several areas required to take damage due to some kind of fall. Thankfully, console commands exist, and you can use this to activate god mode to, you know, solve a softlock, and to skip the infamous on a rail mission, but there's still Lambda Core, Residue Processing, Apprehension, and pretty much the entirety of Zen. To be honest, I only truly like the game up until the military are introduced. The early game feels like a survival horror. It's amped up by the docile opening. It reminds me of one of the reasons why I like the beginning of Doom 3. Just another day on the job, then everything goes to hell and nothing will be normal again. But then the military arrives, and this leads to my next issue. The gunplay isn't really satisfying or really that fun. The shotgun has the most chunkiest, awesome sound ever, but unlike Doom or the later Fear, this shotgun's kinda lackluster. It doesn't help that the enemies barely flinch when shot at. Gunfights are the most boring parts of this game. It can be frustrating when outnumbered. The AI rarely misses, and they're, they're also kinda grenade happy. It is cool to hear them bark orders to each other, and the fact they do seem kinda have a tactic is nice, but... Honestly, I, 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 hate, I hate the gunfights. Not a single weapon is exciting or really effective to use, plus or minus a few, but you don't really get ammo for them, except for the snarks, because they're so dang adorable. I might have a problem thinking oh, these monsters are adorable. I tend to like what came of Half-Life more than Half-Life itself. Not just the mods, but the Source Engine. There are so many fantastic mods that I remember fondly. Source is a fantastic engine for survival horror mods and exploration stuff and walking sims and all this. But Half-Life doesn't really have anything that appeals to the type of games I enjoy. And honestly, that could be my horrible taste or my love for overly ambitious titles. I tend to gravitate more to games that were obscure because they tried something new and failed than something that is, you know, a staple in the gaming world such as Half-Life. I mean, one of my favorite games of all time is SWAT 3. I mean, <laughs> and Shogo. Games that not a lot of people necessarily enjoy. So that's why I say objectively quite often, Half-Life is objectively fantastic. I feel like this game's revolutionary ideas are what keeps it on everyone's top 10 list. The tram ride, the lack of cutscenes, and the graphics, and so on and so forth. 
impressive, especially for the time, but I put up with all the other games that were ahead of their times. Like, I find it hypocritical to praise this game for its uniqueness and give it a criticism pass because of it. I don't see any of y'all playing Trespasser. Come on, guys, it has no HUD, which was a first for its time, and that's why it's so good. Uh, but yeah, if you haven't played this, you need to go play it. There's no excuse. You need to go try it. It's fantastic. My complaints are merely like related to taste and and just the fact that it's not necessarily a game for me it's not the type of thing i go for but hey everyone loves it and you probably will too go check it out and yeah this has been late 90s pc gaming uh with half-life and i hope you enjoyed this episode and stick around because the next one i'll go back to playing my obscure trash maybe i actually don't know what i'm gonna do in the next episode i have so many games but uh, probably the next video will be digging up the obscure. And it's a good one. It's... <laughs> yeah.